Hey everyone, Melissa here with The Creative Season, back for our month of mountain. So in this piece, let's go ahead and grab a couple of smaller pieces of paper and then just get your blues and greens ready. I do have a yellow featured here in this particular palette, but really we're mostly gonna use blue and green. You can use just one blue and one green or use a couple different colors like I do. We're gonna be doing really nice rhythmic motions, creating different skies and clouds. So make sure you have a jar of clean water. You have a couple of pieces of paper set up because we are doing some more wet on wet and we'll want to kind of go back and forth as we let them dry let the colors blend it's almost magical watching the colors blend together and create the depth in the mountains the sky make sure also to have a paper towel because we're going to use that paper towel when our mountains accidentally merge into the sky that happens and also to create some really neat cloud formation so I hope you enjoy this painting and um, it is just fun, a wonderful way to paint some landscapes without a lot of pressure. It's a little bit on the abstract side and really we're just going to have a lot of fun and create lovely, lovely art. So let's get our supplies and we will start painting. Okay, everyone, I am super excited to start our month of mountains. We're gonna be doing at least the next four weeks of really different style mountains. So um, if you remember, we had done some mountains on gesso a couple of weeks ago. And after playing with that, I was had just been going back and forth and looking um, at a lot of different mountains on my way up to visiting my mom. Um, there's Lake Tahoe's about an hour and a half away and after a bunch of rain, we could see the mountains and the snow caps so beautifully. And I just love this simplicity right now. We are gonna do some snow capped mountains, but right now today, I wanna just play with a couple of colors as well as um, creating different mountain scenes. And you can see here, I've got three colors on here basically. Where I'm sorry, I have, Yes, three colors. I think I did add a little bit of yellow, um, but blues and greens, and that's about all. I've been playing a lot with some mountains, so we're gonna create a really simple landscapes here. I've got two pieces of paper taped down because we're gonna kind of move back and forth. I would do smaller pieces of paper, maybe four by six, five by seven, um, different sizes like that. I add, do have them on more of a vertical. I have over here in my palette some different blues. I have ultramarine French blue, um, cerulean blue, We've got phthalo blue. This is a really light permanent green, which we may or may not use. I've got hooker's green here, light. And I believe this is hooker's green medium there. So that's all the colors I have. Um, I may grab um, a little bit of yellow. And in fact, maybe I'll put a just, I don't even know how much I'm gonna use, but I'll put a little bit of cadmium yellow down as well in the palette. Um, we may just use a tad bit of that. So grab your pencil. And really what I want you to do is to start uh, just doing a couple of really loose sketches. So what we're going to do is I am going to um, have that mountain, one of them coming up about two thirds of the way. And let me come down here so you can see this. You do not even have to sketch if you don't want to. But I have got this mountain coming up right here. And I have this main one almost jutting up almost right in the middle and then coming straight down or over to the side. And I have this guy coming right here. And so I want one of them to be significantly taller than the others, at least a little bit taller. So I have that and just moving and then again, moving on down the side. If you wanted to even do a fourth one, you certainly could. We can do one here and I can create that one right down here. And if we wanted to, I could even do over here, I could even do like a fifth one. So we have an uneven number. So we'll have that. Now grab an eraser if you have one nearby. I'm just gonna erase this area here, okay? So I've got five mountains there. Now on this one, I am gonna move this table back here just a little bit. That way you can see this guy down here and move the camera up a bit. There we go. So this one down here, I'm gonna keep this one much simpler. I'm gonna have one mountain here bringing it down, almost all the way down like here. And then I've got number two and bring this guy down over here. And then I have just a third one peeking up right like that, okay? So very simple. And at that, if I actually, I'm gonna have the second one going over and I'm just gonna erase that line there. So just three in that one. Okay, so let's go ahead and start laying down some paint, okay? I've got, um, again, we're gonna go ahead and grab the colors here. Um, I've got some blues and greens. Let's go ahead and do some of the 
sky first and foremost. So I'm going to move this up just a little bit so you can see that. Move this over just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and grab blue. And I am going to grab, I have, it looks like it's some of the ultramarine blue. I'm going to get it pretty watery. And I am, lift that up here. I'm going to start laying down that blue. Now I'm going to keep it wet and I'm going to move it, adding extra water. What I want to create too is almost a sense of some cloud formations. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and go up high. And then let me scoot this up just a little bit so you can see it a bit clearer. I'm going to come down here. And then what I'm going to do is once again, I'm almost going to just let some cloud formations form. I'm going to just move this paint over just like that a bit. I'm going to come in just a little bit so you can see that a bit better. I'm also kind of coming here and see where it's darker there. I'm going to think that's probably where I've got some shadows. Maybe I've got some clouds over there. For example, we've got some heavier clouds here. So I'm going to match that over here, adding in the blue right on the mountain. I'm going to come back now. I'm now going to pick up green. I'm going to go back to my hooker's green which is a light green, and then I'm gonna start laying that right on top. Now, you're gonna to notice too, I'm gonna to try to my, do my best to leave some, I wanna create a delineation, right, a separation of these mountains so they don't look like they're just running into each other. So to do that, I'm gonna start out by leave, leaving a bit of a white line right in there. So we have this one right here. I'm going to come over here now, keeping an eye too of where I put my blue down. Now, you can see too, this is pretty dark, which is fine. I'm going to come back with that blue. I'm going to lay down some blue right on inside of that, right where I'm thinking some of that shadowing is going to be. And just again, laying this down right here. And I have this mountain, I'm going to leave that alone for now. We're going to leave that alone. I'm going to let that sit. I'm going to grab some of this lighter green. I'm going to add that right in here just a little bit. I'm going to take this over here as well and pull that down. You see, I'm keeping this all good. I'm now going to put that fifth mountain right there, keeping this light really, really light. I'm going to go right up to the top of my mountains here. We're thinking that this is maybe after the spring rain. We don't have any snow on these particularly hills or mountains, but this is looking really, really nice. You also notice too, you can tell that it's a mountain. It's also, it's not what I would call abstract, but it's just very, very loose, right? I'm going to take a little bit of that blue. I'm going to put it up against the horizon. Again, I'm only using really one color blue, and that's that French ultramarine blue. Laying that here, and then even in this one, that's the closest to me. I'm gonna just let that blue just move around there. Now, you'll notice I'm getting a little bit in my sky. I definitely wanna avoid that. So I'm gonna come up here. I'm just going to press down and lift up. And we may have just created a cloud, right? All right, we're gonna leave that one, and now I'm gonna move down to this one. And you can see too, here we are, we're not even eight minutes in, and we already, we're gonna move through these fairly fast. Now let's do something a little bit different with this one. We're still gonna go back with the blue, and I'm gonna grab this cerulean blue this time. Cerulean, I like to call it a sky blue. It's very, very light. I'm gonna come up here, and on this one, I am going to keep this very, very wet, and just put in blue everywhere. just like that. Then I'm going to come through with my paper towel and I'm going to actually create some clouds. I'm going to put just a little bit of a darker blue. Just dab it in and let that dance around. Then I'm going to take the paper towel, make sure it's clean so we don't have like green or orange, and we're just actually going to make some cloud formations in there. I'm just going to dab away then I'm going to come back in with the cerulean again, and where I maybe see some, where it almost looks like the clouds are forming on their own, I'm just going to go ahead and dab in some paint, let the paint do what it wants to do, 
and keep it a little bit low, almost if maybe the clouds are hovering around the mountains. We've got, you know, just that the clouds are passing through. I'm sorry, kind of hovering above. We've got more of the sky that we can see in between the mountains. Okay, I'm gonna, I'll bring this in a little bit closer so you can see that. All right, I'm gonna bring this back just a little bit. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and I am going to add that grain. So once again, let's go ahead and start adding that grain right over here. Be careful to come up not too close to your sky, right? Otherwise, we're going to have a green sky and that's going to be such a disappointment. I'm going to come right back up here, leaving again a little bit of a white spot because I want to show where one mountain ends and the other begins. And we will add, you can add that in. You're going to see we're going to go right up there and make some make some changes. So that's the, that was the hooker's green. I'm gonna grab the lighter green too. These are almost like our spring mountains. I'm going up as much as I dare to up to the sky. All right, again, I'm gonna come back up here and I, you can see I'm not coloring the whole thing in. I'm leaving some white spots. Now let's grab some cerulean blue and let's see what that does. Okay, I'm just gonna even put that at the top of this mountain. And that gives it a different look, right? We're still getting different greens, but different than using the French ultramarine green, ultramarine blue. All right, and I'm gonna move this down here. And we're not worried about doing lots of detail today. We're just playing with color, with shadowing, with clouds and landscapes. We're not adding trees or flowers to this particular one today. I'm looking too, if I did have clouds up here, that's probably gonna create a darker area right on top, right where underneath the clouds are gonna be. So I'm gonna add in more deeper green right in here. And I think that's coming right along nicely. I am gonna go ahead and start squishing closer and closer to where my edge of my mountain is. And that's looking really, really nice. Okay, now I'm gonna come back up to the top one here. Let's look at this guy up here, he's starting to dry nicely. I want it a little bit more dry so I can add in some detail, but not, not exceptionally dry yet. I actually wanna come back with a little bit of a darker blue. And we're gonna go ahead right in here. I wanna just lay down just a little bit, creeping in under the clouds here, that blue, beautiful blue sky, but leaving room for my clouds which we do have them collecting under here, don't we? And I think by letting the watercolor do its own dance and making its rhythm, it feels more natural than if we try to force the clouds by trying to create shapes. I'm kind of letting the watercolor do what it wants to do. Okay, now, I would like there to be a darker line against my mountains, but because it's so wet, that makes me nervous too. So I think I'm just gonna actually leave it as is. I am gonna take the green though, I'm gonna come back over here. Oops, and there was another color that got in there and I will do a line here to show this mountain. And then I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna grab some blue. I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of blue in here where that mountain top is, that ridge, all the way to the other side. And then on this guy, this really dark one will do a nice dark blue right here. And then I'm gonna come back, grab some more green, and I'm gonna just let that settle there. That looks really nice. I'm gonna come back with this darker green right on top. We haven't even used the yellow, and I think I'm not gonna use yellow with this one. I am gonna go ahead, and with this green, I'm just gonna drop it in here. We're gonna drop it in here on this side. This was our fifth mountain right here. And again, I'm just gonna put a little bit on my top and letting that, wa that paint settle right in there. Settle here. Okay, I'm actually just gonna leave this one alone. If you see any white spots that seem um, unnatural, go ahead and maybe go ahead and dab in some colors there. Imagine too where we might have some shadowing, just some deep, and the shadowing can represent a thicker grass, right? Thicker tree area that could be up on the mountain. Okay, I love this. Again, I'm seeing some blend in the colors right here, so what I'm gonna do is take my paper towel, and I am gonna once again just stab, and I'll probably end up leaving that as is. And there's that, that looks really nice. I'm gonna grab a super tiny brush and just maybe move that paint around so it doesn't con conglomerate too much. We're gonna spread that out a little bit more. 
Okay, and then down here on this guy, bringing the uh, this one back, I'm actually not going to do too much with this one. You can see right here, some of that green slipped in, so I'm just going to pat it dry. I actually like how this one is going. What I might actually do is, since we did pull out that yellow, go ahead, if you have some yellow out, grab some yellow, get it really wet. And then I think I'm gonna, over here where it's white, I'm just gonna dab in some yellow and see how that changes it. It really doesn't, it looks more like a, it looks like more of a light green, which is what we want. We're not wanting, I don't wanna put really dramatic color changes on these mountains. I really was just wanting to create that beautiful sense of movement and flow and using just a couple of colors to create land and sky, which is really what we've done here, and I love it. I absolutely love this. So I hope you're enjoying. This is our first session of mountains and that we're doing. We're doing a month of mountains, just learning to appreciate, too, um, the beauty and the brilliance of moving back from something um, and seeing it clearly when we back up. You're not seeing all the detail, but you're seeing the big shapes. We're seeing the big picture so I love this if you want to play a little bit more but then go ahead and just let it dry and it will definitely dry a little bit different than what we thought it would too as watercolor does and I am just thinking that this is a lot of fun it's beautiful simple landscapes and you know what a wonderful way to just celebrate um, the changing of seasons too as we go from a cold winter into the warmth of spring so let me know what you think. I hope we're gonna get into more complicated and complex stuff, but very, very fun mountains. But this is just a fun warm up, And you can see too, you can do all sorts of landscapes in different, um, you can do single mountains, lower mountains, higher mountains. We are definitely gonna do some snow-capped mountains. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So I will see you next time. Enjoy your week, the rest of your week. And I hope you, um, you are having fun creating. All right, friends, I'll see you soon.